Like many of the long-running Marvel characters, the God of Mischief and Stories was created by Stan Lee, Larry Lieber, and Jack Kirby. While a character known as Loki first appeared in Venus Number 6 way back in 1949, the version of Loki that has plagued Thor for decades didn't appear until Journey into the Mists, 85 in 1962. Like the character of Thor himself, Loki is a version of the Norse god of tricks. In Marvel Comics, though, Loki is the adopted brother of Thor, causing no end of problems for the Thunder God. While Loki is the primary protagonist for Thor, he has fought against Earth's mightiest heroes on several occasions. Much like his actual Norse alter ego, Loki can change his shape and use magic to fool his enemies. His earliest appearances showcased his use of magic to control other enemies of the Avengers, making up for his lack of physical strength. In the Marvel 616 universe, Loki's origins go back to long before the world of Midgard. Odin's father, Bor, was transformed by a powerful frost giant into a pile of snow. When Odin arrived, he refused to help his father, and so Bor cursed his son. The curse claimed that Odin would raise the son of a fallen king. Later, when Odin led the forces of Asgard against Jotuns, he discovered a tiny frost giant baby in Lofi's palace. Odin took the child in and raised him as his own son, and as he grew up, Loki began to resent both Odin and Thor. Thor was the heir to the Asgardian throne and had all the qualities of a Norse king. Loki was small, more interested in magic and mischief, and eventually Loki would become known as the god of mischief and torment his brother in Midgard relentlessly. Throughout his long history in Marvel Comics, Loki would go on to eventually achieve most of his goals, at least for a small time. He would fight against Thor, and he even became the ruler of Asgard after supposedly killing Odin. Of course, Odin would return and Loki would be ousted from the throne. For a long period, Loki was Thor's standard villain. He would work against the God of Thunder, using his magic and lies to be a constant thorn in Thor's side. Most of his plans were pretty standard. Loki would work with other villains, fighting against the forces of Earth, and it was only when he hit the modern age of comics that Loki became something more than just a mischievous god. Loki has flipped from hero to villain to anti-hero more often than many characters in the Marvel Universe. He would die several times and would always reappear and reincarnate in some form or another. For a time during the return of Asgard in the late 2000s Thor run, Loki appeared as a woman. This was not unheard of in Norse mythology, as the Norse Loki appeared frequently in various forms, including that of an old woman. Of course, Loki appears more as an attractive woman in Marvel Comics, though, because, well, why not? After the events of Dark Siege, Loki would die again and be reborn as a young child. During this time, Thor sought to try and once again teach his younger brother to be a hero. For a brief time, young Loki would fight alongside the Young Avengers. This wouldn't last forever, of course, and Loki would eventually dabble on the side of evil for a time again. He would regain some of his age and become an agent of Asgard, performing secret missions under the direction of Queen Freya, his adopted mother and possibly the only person that he truly cares about. Not shockingly, this wouldn't last either, and it would seem that he would betray her as well. But eventually, it would be shown that his betrayal was just another lie as he attempted to aid the side of heroes during the War of the Realms by, in turn, betraying Melikath. While there have been several alternate future versions of Loki, the newest is possibly the worst. The being known as King Loki is the agent of Asgard that managed to redeem himself. However, Loki is still looked down on as merely the god of lies. Finally, he decided to return to his evil ways and was the one who killed the Earth. He would eventually seek out the Necro Sword, hoping to use it to finally kill his brother Thor at the end of the universe. In his last minutes, though, Loki would once again turn to the side of good, helping Thor finally put an end to the Necroblade and the living embodiment of darkness that Gore has become. Loki is one of the characters that can be anything the writers want him to be. In this way, he never lets something as pesky as redemption get in the way of what he needs to do. He has appeared in various forms of media, and arguably made more famous because of Tom Hiddleston. His portrayal of the character is basically what everyone knows and loves at this point with Loki. He's done so well that notoriously he's been kept around because he's so well liked. As a matter of fact, now that I'm going back on it, I can't even think of a different version of Loki. Every time I think of Loki, it's always the Tom Hiddleston version, which honestly, look, I liked it too. But let me know in the comments down below what your opinion of Loki is. Do you like the evil one? Do you like the older one? Do you like when he was trying to become president? Do you like when he's like an old woman or a hot woman or a young kid or he was on the Young Avengers? There's so many different versions of Loki. This is one of those characters that everyone can have their own version of it. Or do you just like Tom Hiddleston because, I mean, isn't 
isn't he dreamy? Anyway, guys, thank you so much for your continued support here at Comic Story, and we're going to bring you a couple more of these Know Your Universes about characters that we are covering because, well, they were announced in the Phase 5 of Marvel's MCU Universe. Anyway, let me know in the comments down below what you think. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time right here.